Today on Locked on Rockies, Doyle rules, Doyle rules. You are Locked on Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked on Rockies podcast for today, the first day of August here on the Locked on Rockies podcast, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast that is free and streaming on your favorite streaming services and available on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel where you can be part of the show. You can fire off your Rockies hot takes. You can let me know what's on your mind when it comes to the Colorado Rockies. And uh, also, you can help the show grow when you like the videos, when you subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are super duper close to our 1,000 subscriber goal on YouTube. If you like the show, if you want to support, I can't emphasize it enough how much it uh, help it is for you to go over to the YouTube channel to like the videos and to uh, let me know what's on your mind. And uh, we did get some reaction from the trade deadline yesterday here. Uh, let's see. This is from... Uh, let's see. RMK 709 says it's interesting to note that the young guys who got lots of at bats. Tovar and Doyle are really the only guys we've seen developed this year. Hmm. What about good point? Uh, let's see. Michael Disney says, thanks for voicing what we were all thinking. The only explanation for keeping everyone is that Montford has high hopes. We're a 500 club for next year. Well, Michael Disney, uh, the good news on that front is we'll hear from Bill Schmidt and what he had to say about the trade deadline later in the show. So, uh, we got, that's, uh, more, uh, more comments are available, uh, and, uh, available to you on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel. So be part of the show. Join in on the fun and uh, let me know what's on your Rockies mind here. Uh, today, we'll talk about Brenton Doyle deserving the player of the month. We'll talk about uh, Kyle Freeland and a good win for the Rockies. But uh, we will also talk about Bill Schmidt's reaction to the trade deadline because I think there are a lot of Rockies fans out there still a little perplexed, a little... Um, peeved by the deadline but it, it's weird it's, we got to put in the context and 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 uh we got some uh some quotes and things to look at there from mlb.com uh and thomas harding we'll dive into all that in just a little bit before we do today's episode is brought to you by game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on mlb for 20 dollars off your first purchase Okay, let's start with the game first here. And, uh, you know, those a low-scoring kind of uh, a clash will happen there. So uh, and in a ballpark in which the Rockies have historically struggled in against the team that they've struggled in, and in an answer there. It's, it was a little bit closer than you'd like, but what do we love to see for the Rockies especially? What is one of the best things that the Rockies can do, especially uh, as, as, through, as this year has continued since the beginning of the year? Score first. Scoring first is just a big, big game changer across the board for not only the Rockies, but I think for any team. I don't have the statistics uh, uh, on hand, but it is shown that when you score first, when you are the first one on the board, more often than not, you are your likelihood of winning increases. And it's always good for it's what's been nice to see, even amidst the Rockies losing in this uh, of the in the middle part of the season here has been at least the Rockies are getting out in front. At least the Rockies, might, you know, and and. I know that means they're blowing leads late. I know that that you know that, that means the leads aren't lasting. They're not building on leads. Yes, there's issues there, but at least that is a that is an improvement compared to the last uh, to be the beginning of the season in which the team couldn't stop getting behind and 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 setting a historical record from playing from behind. This also is I, I just I believe this is so big for pitchers, especially. I I, I just think when you're a Rockies pitcher that goes on the road. And you have an uh, you you have a lead. I know it didn't work for Cal Quantrill in the first game. I, I just think that totally boosts the mentals. I think it totally boosts the mentals when when you you can go up there, and that that's true at Coors Field as well. But I I think a lot more players are uh, trained and understanding of of the threat and uh, the ever changing environment of Coors Field. Um, but especially on the road, you know, I I I, I always it always makes me feel at least a little better when the Rockies get on the board first on the road and, and, and added bonus points when you do it in the first inning. I mean, that's the type of stuff that uh, uh, y you love to see. And then the offense goes cold <laughs> for a while up until who should be the player of the month. Brenton Doyle 
I mean, amidst amidst the an incredibly frustrating season, amidst all of the issues. I mean, this is he's one of the most impressive stories in baseball. I mean, the the the, the, the turnaround for for Brenton Doyle, who does it on the road too. You know, it's a, who's not just hitting at Coors Field. I mean. That that excuse doesn't even matter. It, it it's an excuse to go from the entire narrative about this guy last year was about let's just get let's just get decent hitting, and and Doyle's going to have to con- you know this this has to continue throughout seasons and 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 a career for us to really fully buy into uh, the offensive developments of, of Bretton Doyle, but <laughs> how can you not? I mean he's he looks like a completely different player at the dish, and honestly. While he is on the older side of, of with with less experience and and playing time for the Rockies, I think that maturity definitely is playing a factor. Bretton Doyle looks comfortable as a major leaguer. Bretton Doyle doesn't look like the moment is too big for him. We we've said this about Ezekiel Tovar a bunch, and it, and it and it's very true. Those guys are are ready. Those guys. It, it, in reality, even with last year and Bretton Doyle struggles at the dish where he looked outmatched there. He never tried to back down from the challenge and they kept and and he he backed it up by showing you that he's going to give it his all at, at, on on the defensive side and when he can. And clearly that inspired him to go and have an off season in which he overhauled a bunch of stuff and, and, and I'm sure. I mean again, I, I I haven't broken down the swing mechanics. I know there's people out there that that are, are can do that way more knowledgeable and talented than I. But he puts in the work, he makes the changes, and he makes the adjustments, and he becomes a player that, like, I didn't fathom. I, I mean, I knew, I guess, I guess since we looked at the power last year and, and some of that, a 2020 was always a possibility for Brenton Doyle. But I never really thought it was that serious. You know what I mean? I, I, I wasn't even sitting here I, going into this season, going into everything, holding my breath that Brenton Doyle was going to continue to hit for power. And then not only for him to hit for power, but to just be an overall offensive force for the Rockies, someone that's batted in the middle of the lineup, someone that has been, uh, you know, crushing it for for a whole, you know, a full month and then some for the Colorado Rockies. It, it, it's it's amazing. It, it's it's really something that uh, I, I I really am. I, he he's just such a joy to watch. I mean, it's when you're looking for players to just like fascinate over right and 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 get pumped on you're he 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 is he is exactly that and i keep thinking he's older than he is he's only 26 so for him to be hitting his stride like this and uh the last 30 games for brenton doyle 291 average 347 obp a slugging percentage of 700 in that time he's gotten 30 rbi which matches Every time he struck out, he matched it with an RBI. He hit 12 home runs in the last 30 games. He got nine walks in that time and uh, also stole three bases. In uh, the month of July here, let's get the numbers here. All right, 333 batting average. He's got an OBP of 394. His slugging is 800. Going and this, And remember, he missed a little time here. This is a 27 RBI, 11 home runs in the month. The Rockies, you know, in one of the highest home run hitting months for the Rockies uh, this this month in July. And Bretton Doyle was a huge part of that, contributing uh, over a fourth of the home runs uh, available or over the fourth of the home runs that the Rockies hit this month. He jumped. I mean, and, and it's a huge, massive jump from for, for home runs as well. He hit two home runs in June. He hit two home runs in May and two home runs in April, as well as a home run in March. Not only doubling uh, the, the up his home run totals, but shattering them. And he he's someone that uh, is just really, really impressed. I, I easily the most impressive Rocky this season. I, I don't think it's anything close to uh, uh, close for me. I mean, Ezekiel Tovar is up there. But uh, anyway, here's from Thomas Harding's thankful for the bad Doyle finishes a dominant July. Uh, let's see. Doyle's extra base hits topped all players for the month and his homer total was tied with A's Brent uh, Brent Rooker. 
Uh, accolades are great. Rockies manager Bud Black says, love to see him get player of the month. He's deserving. And uh, Doyle says that he's feeling better as well. Uh, and says he never faced the uh, Krause in a regular season game, but he did his homework. I know that guy is sl- kind of slider heavy. Dur- uh, Doyle said during the Rockies TV post game interview, I wasn't sitting slider, but I also wasn't not sitting slider. I just wanted to get something elevated, something I could handle. I put a good swing on it. And uh, here's Black again. The peaks and valleys we've talked about, Black said, those two guys, Doyle and Tovar, are a big part of our, our, our future. How they handle that is they're consistent. They don't wobble. They hang in there. It's a great sign of stability and self-confidence. You just got to keep going. Keep the faith that your talent is going to get you out of it. And that's and that that is some good good belief there too as well, especially for those two guys as uh, they are continuing to uh, have a great season and not only build uh, you know the the end results might be frustrating, but the personal results and the personal developments and the personal change for those two players is massive. All right, uh, let's talk a little bit about Kyle Freeland and then we'll dive into the uh, Bill Schmidt comments there for uh, about the trade deadline. We'll do that coming up next on today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Before we do that, though, got to tell you about the folks that help make this show possible, and that includes Liquid IV. Liquid IV is going to help keep you hydrated during the hot, hot months this summer. And when you're taking in America's pastime, don't forget to hydrate with Liquid IV's popsicle firecracker flavor, a surefire summer hit. Because baseball and summer go together like Liquid IV and indulgent hydration. You can get all it is is just taking a little bit of water and you get your packet and you just drop it in and it hydrates you more than just water alone. And not only is it getting more water, more hydration into you, but there's so many great flavors and options available to you. Maybe you just want to put it into you know the classic lemon or a classic lime. Or like we said, maybe you really want to indulge in summertime favorites like popsicle, fire, cracker, flavor. You can see uh, other flavors. Uh, and that flavor, by the way, is citrus-fueled lemon, lime, tart, cherry, raspberry flavors. They got a full list of them on their uh, website. Uh, one stick plus 16 ounces of water hydrates better than water alone. Three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, eight essential vitamins and nutrients, always non-GMO, vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free, and soy-free. No more thirsty summers when you indulge in hydration with Liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and you use code MLB at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code MLB at liquidiv.com. We are also brought to you by SupplyHouse.com. SupplyHouse.com has got you covered for HVAC, plumbing, electrical, whatever you need in those fields. They got you covered. It's the reliable way to order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical products online. Their easy-to-use website is packed with helpful resources and the latest product info to help you get the job done right. Shop a complete inventory of over 200,000 parts from over 400 top brands and get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast. Need help with an order? Get expert support and industry-leading service from the friendliest folks in the business and talk to a real person. Yes, a real person every time pros in the skilled trades can get a competitive edge by joining supplyhouse.com's free trade master program every trade master gets access to a dedicated phone line free shipping and discounts on every order join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at supplyhouse.com slash tm and order plumbing hvac and electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few clicks at supplyhouse.com This is the Locked On Rockies podcast. We are free and streaming on your favorite streaming services, bringing in your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. And if you are looking for 24-7 sports coverage, if you're looking to uh, get that background noise of sports that you've loved your whole life, Locked On Sports Today has got you covered. 24-7 sports coverage from your local Locked On hosts. And don't forget, SiriusXM and the SiriusXM apps got you covered all season long for your Rockies play-by-play action. Kyle Freeland, baby. Kyle Freeland is uh, changing uh, again, changing the narrative a bit about his season and even uh, follows up a great, uh, follows up a tough performance against the Giants, 
with a great performance against the Angels last night. And another performance in which we've seen him uh, be the Kyle Freeland that, that we were confident in and be this new version of Kyle Freeland as well. Kyle Freeland in the first uh, had a 38.57 ERA after the first game of the season and uh, finished uh, his uh, April uh, with 8.78 ERA. Uh, since returning from that, he had a 1.42 ERA in two starts in June. And in the month of July, he had a 3.52 ERA in July. And most of the and in that time, he went at least six innings in four out of five starts. In that time, he only gave up more than two earned runs once out of those last five, uh, those last uh five starts, once in the last seven starts for Kyle Freeland. Uh, and the walks are all sitting at no higher than two walks in the last seven starts for him as well. One of the most intriguing and best and most exciting things about this Kyle Freeland stretch, the strikeouts. Kyle Freeland has had uh, more than five strikeouts in back-to-back -back appearances. He's had five, at least five strikeouts in uh, three out of the, or no, four out of the last five starts. Uh, if you bring that back, that's four out of the last seven uh, starts for him in that as well. And Kyle Freeland's ERA on the season has gone from a 38.57 to start the season now down to a 5.64. What's also good to note about these Kyle Freeland performances and this good stretch for Kyle Freeland as well is that uh, four of them have come on the road, putting the Rockies in positions to win ball games on the road and doing it against uh, some good talent and some bad talent as well. So a good mix of everything there for Kyle Freeland. A good mix when when he is dealing, when he is in the right spot, he is excellent. He is still someone that can certainly be a, a an effective pitcher, someone that certainly still has uh, talent, someone that also is showing an ability to adapt. The, the broadcast even mentions this a little bit as well. Uh, on uh, they were talking about how Kyle Freeland has seen an increase in the uh, the strikeouts here since returning from the IL. It's kind of what we were hoping for this season anyway, right? When we were getting hyped up about this Kyle Freeland who had uh, been getting an increase in velocity, who had been working on some stuff in the offseason. An increase in strikeouts was kind of what we were hoping for to, to see from Kyle Freeland. This has been the version of Kyle Freeland we've been hoping to see throughout the season. Uh, it's just a bummer we haven't been able to see it throughout the whole season and just in the smaller sample size after the injury takes out all of May and most of June. but. What a, I mean, it's a solid month. And again, it's another reminder that that it's he he's he's someone that is clearly effective. He's someone that that clearly helps the Rockies. He's someone that 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 makes it, it makes this rotation better. And the Rockies are better when he is on the field. He is they are he they are better when Kyle Freeland is their is their starting pitcher. And, and it's been proven over the, uh, the 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 last month. I mean, it's 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 really good to see. Uh, Freeland not only bounce back, but bounce back and be so successful uh, in these last starts, even amidst not always, you know, getting the uh, the wins in that time or the Rockies might be, uh, you know, dropping a couple of games there, but adjusting, making progress and a solid stretch of, of, of good pitching. He needs to continue. It needs to continue to look like this for the rest of the season. However, I'd like to see it be again, you know, a bad start here and there is going to happen, but a bad one bad start out of seven. I'll take that every single time. That's a that that's a darn that's a darn good mix. And again, the the improvement has been great. The increase in the velocity and the strikeouts. I love seeing Kyle Freeland strike out more batters. I love seeing him hit fastballs, painting them in the top of the zone, freezing batters up. That's the good stuff. I like seeing that stuff. So hopefully it continues. Hopefully we'll see it continue to go throughout the rest of the season and Freeland stays healthy. He's looking healthy. He's looking confident, looking like he's got his legs underneath him and stuff as well. So uh, good to note there and uh, good to, uh, to to see that uh, Kyle Freeland has been uh, helping out. Five game losing streak uh, snapped there uh, with there. And uh, Bud Black told reporters here, this is from uh, uh, the Denver Post article. He's been pitching with confidence inside and tonight he showed what can happen when he hits that inside corner against a right handed heavy lineup. Uh, so there you go. It was a close game, though. I mean, it was it was just a one bad pitch and, and, and the offense not doing much. But Brenton Doyle backing up his guy there. The Rockies getting a two to one win over the Angels. Uh, the series finale is tonight as the Rockies look to start remaking some ground on this road trip that they are now one and five on 
uh, let's see how they handle the Angels as they line up in this finale. Uh, not a getaway day. It is a, it's a night game as the Rockies are looking for win number 40 on the year. All right, Bill Schmidt spoke about the trade deadline. We're going to talk about that coming up next on today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Before we do that, though, got to tell you about the folks that help make this show possible, and that includes Game Time. Game Time is the spot to go if you need tickets. Guess what? Your friends are in town. They have tickets to the ball game. They are ready to go, and you are out of luck. You don't know where to go. You don't know how to get tickets. And all the prices that you do see are out of control. Well, guess what? Game time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app, well, they actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Like I said, Game Time got me to the All Star game, Game Time got me into the arena for the Avalanche and the Kraken for the playoffs. They've gotten game time's gotten me into plenty of events and it's not just baseball. It's all the events, all the sports, all available for you on the game time app. And guess what? When you look at a seat on the game time app, you're going to get a picture from that seat and you're going to know exactly where you're sitting. It's one of my favorite parts of the game time experience. Download the game time app. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with game time. Create that account and use code locked on MLB. That's code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and, and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-M-L-B for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. This is the Locked on Rockies podcast. We are free and streaming on your favorite streaming services, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast and Network. Speaking of the network, they got Locked on Sports Today, 24-7 sports streaming channel available to you on YouTube. Go check it out there. Go check out SiriusXM and the SiriusXM app for all your Rockies play-by-play -play action. And after the game, Go hang out with my guy, Anilo Piro, and the Locked on Rockies postcast. You'll see the postcast pop up in your audio feeds. But if you want to check out the video, that's on the Locked on Denver Sports YouTube channel. And you want to go there anyway, because that's going to keep you up to date on all things. Well, Denver sports. All right. Bill Schmidt spoke about the trade deadline. Didn't love reading it. Didn't love the answers. But I, again, I'm trying to... I'm trying to envision, I, I'm trying to really envision things and, and because here, here's what Schmidt also talks about and, and highly recommend this from Thomas Harding. Rockies GM discusses trade deadline and future goals. This is on MLB.com. Uh, so I'm reading here and, and I'll be uh, referencing this piece here. There are a lot of things people don't see, Schmidt said, from the dugout at Angel Stadium before Wednesday's night game. But at the end of the day, they've got to see to believe. We've got to continue growing. Schmidt counts the last two deadline periods as a success because the organization has added multiple starters and relievers. As manager Bud Black has said on occasion, a team needs to enter a season with a minimum eight starters capable of winning in the majors. With free agent pitchers unwilling to choose the Rockies in Coors Field, the numbers accumulated through the draft and trade have to augment what the Rockies have. Schmidt is calling on the current players, some of whom Schmidt talked to other teams about but either didn't receive or like the offers to become healthier and better. Unless offseason deals materialize, righty starters Herman Marquez and Cal Quantrill, lefty starter Austin Gomber, and second baseman Brendan Rodgers, all of whom Schmidt feels are capable of more, head into the final year of their contract slash club control. I mean, I just want to start there. You list off those names and you say you want more. But how many times can the Rockies organization themselves continue to say, I want more, I want this. I But again, I ask, how are you helping them get there? A team that that's reputation. And again, I, I am I am not in the building. I am not in the organization. I'm not walking around. So so there is some ignorance I'm speaking from here. But if I, I've heard this about Brennan Rogers, I've heard this about Austin Gomber. And, and, and he goes on to say, we need Chris Bryant to stay healthy and stay on the field. I've heard all of that. So what are you doing? I, I really want to know what are the Rockies doing in terms of development? It was great to have the farm head on, on the broadcast yesterday and learn about the process and learn about a bunch of stuff. That's cool. I want to hear directly from, from Bill Schmidt and the Rockies organization of what they are doing to help their players develop and get on track. What are they noticing with Kyle Freeland back on, on there that, that they can't apply to Cal Quantrill and Austin Gomber? What, what are they noticing from Brenton Doyle 
and Ezekiel Tovar that they can't apply to the rest of the Rockies' offense. I just, I, I'm asking to see more from you. I, I am. I, and, and I will give it that last, last year's deadline was a success. And this year's deadline, even though that there is this control, if these players, if these players don't take steps forward, the Rockies don't trade these players, and then the Rockies leave and, and the return is minimal, that's frustrating to me. I, I, I think that there's more value and, and there's a way to drum up the value for these players that, that other teams have been successful. I mean, there were some fleeces during the trade deadline. There were some teams that overpaid for, for, for replacement to or just barely over replacement level players. I, I, I want to see it too. And it's not just from the players. It's from the Rockies organization. It's it's like we talked about the creativity. I want to see them invest in analytics. I want to see them invest in making Coors Field the most annoying place possible for opposition to play. I want to see them invest in, in creative thinking. I want to see them invest in thinking outside the box. That's what I, I mean. So when I see them just say, we want to see more from their play, the players, I want to see more from you, the front office. I want to see more from you, the executives who make things happen. I want to see more from the people that have said, we don't turn, we don't accept the new ideas. Those ideas won't work. We're not going to do it. I want to see those ideas. I want to see those possibilities. And so it, it's, it's, it's a real easy thing for Bill Schmidt to just sit here and say, we have confidence that they can do more and be more, and the ceiling is higher for these guys. Well, then show me. I would like to see Brendan Rodgers hit the ceiling that he's supposed to hit. I would like to see Austin Gomber be the 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 the, the piece that that you sought after in there. And, and I'd like you to make a decision about, and, and I'd like you to, to to develop Montero into the play, the hard hitting, heavy hitting offensive threat that you guys told us he would be in the wake of the trade. I would like you to give opportunities to the young players. I'd like you to provide moments for us to get to know some of these younger players and get to know some of these guys within the system. But now we got to give opportunity to these other guys to prove it. Is this an audition for off-season trades? I mean, that that could be a possibility. Maybe there there is a possibility with some of these guys that that this this back half can be an addition for for the Rockies to try to make some off season deals, but I'm not really confident in that. I I, I don't know. I don't necessarily think I, I I don't see that happening for for the Rockies. I I really don't think that that is that is Bill Schmidt's plan. But. It, it is it for for the twenty. It's so the twenty twenty five. This is from Thomas Harding. So the 2025 Rockies will be focused on bounce back candidates, continued improvement of mainstay players such as Rogers and 2024 all-star Ryan McMahon and younger players. So what are we going to do? What, what are, what are the things that are, that are, that, 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 that are going to help this team? What, what, what is going to help you? It's clear. And they, these are players that these aren't one, one year sample sizes for a couple of these guys. These are, this is this is now a, a few seasons, and I understand health and blah, blah, blah. How are you going to help keep your players healthy? That's another question. Uh, here's what Schmidt says uh, here a little bit. Uh, let's let's get uh, a follow-up here from, from Thomas Harding, Harding. Still, the argument will be that the Rockies should have moved more experienced players for more prospects, which may have been punting in 2025. You talk to teams and try to find things to match up with, Schmidt said. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Some other guys made decisions, short-term, long-term views of things. It wasn't from lack of effort and conversation. Did we get to the finish line with some deals? No. But we got a feel for the value of some of our players. We're trying to get better. That ain't the most Rockies answer I've ever heard in my entire life. Yes, you know the value. And there certainly has never been any logic or any uh, evidence of a team that uh, of a Rockies team overvaluing their own talent and not getting deals done. But disclaimer again, we will say, we will say the two trades the Rockies made were good. The Rockies did bring in more arms than they sent, and they did and they sent pieces that that probably weren't going to factor into the bullpen down the line. But that being it. And your answer to just sit here amidst a, a season in which 100 losses is coming at you like a speeding train to sit there and just say, we just want them to play better. 
is a pretty lame excuse. And I hope the same, I hope the same mindset, I hope the same process of expecting and hoping more is being applied to you all in the front office because I am expecting more from you and I'm expecting a Rockies team to start figuring ways out to turn it around. If you're going to keep and stick with this roster and believe that these are the players that are going to be key to your future and getting back into the playoffs and back into competition, what are you going to do, Colorado Rockies? to help them get there, help them sustain that, and help them be able to take on really good teams in baseball. Well, we'll see how the 2024 Rockies finish this series against the Angels tonight. We'll see what the future of the Rockies holds, and we'll be breaking it all down for you here on Locked on Rockies. Hey, coming up uh, tomorrow on Locked on Rockies, we will be doing a crossover with Locked on Padres. So we'll talk a little bit more about the trade deadline, talk about really how interesting the Padres are right now. But are the Padres going to Padre? We'll talk about that and more uh, coming up on tomorrow's episode with, of course, our guy Javi there. Uh, but, folks, thank you so much for making Locked On Rockies your first listen of the day. Really do appreciate that. For your second listen, go check out Locked On MLB. Sully's got you covered with laughs, everything when it comes to uh, baseball and going through the rest of the season, getting you ready for the postseason and more. Sully's a great listen. You, you, you got to go check that out. And if you need more Colorado sports coverage, Locked On Broncos, Locked On Avalanche, Locked On Nuggets, Locked On Buffs, and of course, the Locked On Rockies postcast on the Locked On Denver Sports Channel. Until next time, I'm Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked On Rockies podcast.